Hey, hey everybody, this is Larry. This is me going with Q3 of the Bi-Weekly Contest 78, Maximum White Tiles Covered by Carpet. So I think there are a couple of ways you can do it, but most of it is going to be some variation of greedy or sliding window. Um, there is <clears throat> one key thing to note is that the tiles are non-overlapping, and that allows you to kind of implement it in a slightly easier way. And the way that I think about it is that um, you could think about it as a queue, right? Uh, of this sliding window and you have this queue that goes from left to right and they really you can do it in either case but the way that i do it is that um you want all of the current segment you want all of the current segment and then you try to go okay how much to the left is there right um and this idea of kind of sliding window should be pretty straightforward the, the idea right the implementation may be a little tricky but the idea should be pretty straightforward and you can you know visualize it pretty straightforwardly um, the hard part, of course, is that, well, there are a lot of tiles, right? 5 times 10 to 4, 50,000. Um, and the, the the dimension, the domain is 10 to the 9. So you can't just have like a boolean away and then, you know, sliding in uh, from left to right that way because that would be too slow because 10 to the 9 is a lot of things. So the way that I did it, and this becomes an implementation problem, which will go over my code. But <clears throat> basically, I just have a queue, as we said of all the segments that are inside um, our, our thing right now. And then now as we kind of push this tile, push this tile into the queue, we go, okay, we, we try to paint as much as we can. We put in the queue and then here we determine what's the leftmost, like, you know, we can, we can paint carpet length things. So then what's the leftmost uh, boundary of this way? Right? Um, and then while, and then here we try to remove from the queue and the queue represents all the tiles that we're painting. Um, and there really, there are three conditions uh, that I wrote in a weird way, maybe, but we look at the, we look at the leftmost uh, tile. So, you know, it will be from left to right in the queue. And then if we should remove the entire tile, we just remove it because that means that um, the cutoff, uh, this entire uh, tile, is in the cutoff, right? And then the other condition is that the cutoff is in the middle. Um, so basically, well, maybe I could do some ASCII art, but real quick. Uh, but basically, let's say you have you know segments like this, and then now that we're looking at here, that's basically this case, right? Of okay, this thing is too far to the left, so we can pop it up, pop it off. Um, in this case. This is basically if this is that, then then you have something like this. Well, okay, it's in the middle. So then, what happens if it's in the middle? Well, uh, I chop it off, and then I basically uh, okay, let's get one more space. Yeah, I basically chop it off and go. Okay, this is now the new left, and this is the new segment, right? And then of course you just do some math to keep track of the the number of current tiles painted, and then at the end, uh, and if this is, and if this is just the case where I might just be exhaustive. Um, where everything is still inside, so you have something like this maybe, um, and yeah, and then after every t processing every tile, we just calculate how many things we can draw and keep track of it. Um, this is going to be linear time, linear space. Uh, the linear space coming from the queue and linear time because every time you push something, at most each item. Uh, so this can only happen once, right? Because it can only happen to one segment. Um, so yeah, and this can only also only happen once per per um, <clears throat> per item in the queue. One, it can only happen once. So this is also going to be amortized over one. Um, so yeah, so so in a way, everything is amortized. So this is going to be linear time, linear space uh, for this part. Of course, we have to sort in the beginning, so this is going to be n log n for the sorting. But yeah, unless I miss where, nope. Uh, and you can also just do a easy basic sort because it doesn't overlap. So we, so basically, the first element is always going to be um, like determinate because it's just not overlapping, right? Um, so yeah, uh, this is my code. This is what I have. Let me know what you think, and you can watch me solve a live in the contest <laughs> now. Okay. Uh, catching up, but that that minute penalty is kind of tough.
Okay, ten to the nine. Okay, that's the big one. Mm. That sounds like I'm a little surprised if you haven't gotten it yet. But mm. how do I do this math? I mean, obviously, I'm trying to slide window, but the mm -hmm. overlap. Mm -hmm. Oh, this has non overlapping. Okay, doesn't really matter, does it? Maybe it does. How do I do this light? Okay. Mm, if I have a cube, but I'm going to see what it did. Does it matter? This one. Okay. Okay. Um. Let's see. So many potential off by one. Mm -hmm. I don't know what 
I don't think about it off by one faces. That most is. Otherwise, then it's in the middle, and then now this is so pointed off by one, but I think the idea is right. So this means that Maybe an infinite loops accident. <sighs> what are infinite loops? Oh, I see. Should be fast on this one to be honest, but I'm a little bit weak. Okay. So that's four plus okay. I think that's true. But my leftmost is wrong. <laughs> okay. Maybe that's right. I think that's right, maybe. Hopefully. Is there any way to see what case is called the main function? Oh, YOLO. Okay, cool. Uh, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about today's problem, and I will see you later. Bye bye.